Samoa, our Pacific neighbour, yet with vastly different resources and attitudes towards disability. Off the tourist trail is a different story from the idyllic brochures and sunset beaches. Talofa, Samoa, an island paradise. But even paradise can have its problems. It's still very much uh, not so good here in Samoa, the attitude towards people with disability. There's been a lot of abandonment on people that do have disabilities. The, the children are, are, are left to the grandparents or aunties or uncles to look after while the parents have moved on. There's a lot of things needed to be done to assist them, to assist this daughter. I just wish we could do much more. We're on an intrepid journey around the island to meet the people, hear the stories, see the beauty and the hardship. We'll be asking the question, is enough being done for people with disabilities in Samoa? For a lot of Samoan families, disability is a shameful secret. People with disabilities are often ostracised from their community and the wider society. I think most people are changing their attitudes towards people with disability. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Nua Nua Olialofa is a non-profit organisation determined to change the perception of disability. The name means rainbow of love. Fatino is blind. Nearly everyone working for the group has a disability. They realised if they wanted change, they had to lead the charge themselves. One of our programs we do is we raise awareness of the community on the issues and the rights of persons with disabilities. Fatino and her team want to get an accurate picture of disability in Samoa. They're conducting a census of the island's entire disabled population. While they're at it, they're putting families in touch with agencies that might be able to help. Caring and that for persons with disabilities is a total responsibility of their families. I think that's why there's a whole lot of issues facing persons with disabilities because they don't have that support and they don't have that service to accommodate their daily needs. of Apia, inland and rural. Four people in the family we're visiting have a disability. There's no phone, no car, and for years they've existed without any support. But this family is just one of hundreds in the same isolated situation. Enlico is blind, he's had limited schooling and now rarely leaves his home. He has none of the modern aids that could improve his life. His brother has no communication and appears to have multiple disabilities, but he's never been assessed. Their mother devotes her life to her four disabled children. <coughs> have you been blind since birth? Yes. It's the first time he's been asked about his condition and his needs, and it gives him hope that his situation might change. No, he's, he's saying now he would like a weight gain, and he would also like a wheelchair because he's, um, he's growing old at this stage. And whatever kind of assistance that's possible would be highly appreciated. Their poverty is compounded by the fact their mother can't work. What are some of the um, challenges for your family having, you know, you have four people with a disability in the family. What are some things that are hard for the whole family? One of the major challenges that, that, that they realised is the financial side. Because without the money, they won't be able to, to buy the needs that they want. There is little information about disability, 
Instead, tales of sins and superstitions are passed down through the generations. What about your spirituality? Does this challenge your faith in God? Yeah, I, I believe that this is a challenge from God, is to test my, my faith in Him. There is speculation in the village, amongst the village, that this is a sin in the family, it's a curse for the family. But for, for, her, um, for myself, this is not a curse. This is, this is all, um, all a challenge from God, uh, and, and it's to, to make us stronger. Uh, to 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 have these four kids, they did take the children to the to the monastery for the nuns to see if it was a curse. But the the nuns at the monastery told us that no, it's 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 just to strengthen you on how to how you carry your cross by God. When the mum was talking about like people in the village talking about like a curse or something, what, what was she talking about then? Because Samoan people, we are very superstitious and uh, we tend to look at this as it's a curse on the family. Either the mother or father have done something in the past and the, the children are now um, bearing the fruits of that. As you can see, the, the fale or the, the house, all of this is, was um, donated by St. Vincent's. To pause. They saw the living conditions that they were living. This is a house just behind here, and it's it's actually just a shack, what I would say. Here in Samoa, there's no benefits, disability benefits available. People with disabilities um, rely on on organisations such as Nonolia Lofa, Fiuma Malama for education or Lotu Tamafai. Certainly, it is quite sad that the government isn't providing special benefits for for people with disabilities. You know, they tend to fend off for themselves. Mm -hmm.